Good evening and welcome to Chill Out Time. And uh, this time it's evening, yes, and not morning. <laughs> now today we have the Amiga book and uh, I bought this, yet I haven't even touched it yet because I thought, mm, let's do a Chill Out Time on it. It'd be a good one. So I'm going to have my first flick through and uh, you can grab a tea and join me and enjoy. So let's see what this is about. By the way, this one, this is by the makers of Retro Gamer. I mean, it says the Amiga book, but it looks to me more like a magazine than a book. But anyway, let's see what it's about. So welcome to the Amiga book. In association with Retro Gamer magazine. So... Amiga book, the contents. Hmm. Interesting. The Amiga 500, it has some information about this. Her home computer that's so incredibly associated with the history and fate of Commodore. It's perhaps a little surprising that the Amiga's genesis can be tracked all the way back to the Commodore's biggest rival, Atari. Oh, I can see myself getting engrossed in this thing. <laughs> Oh, Batman. Wow. But the, the certain games I see and they just like, you know, they, f they make me fill in with the joy. <laughs> what game is this? I keep seeing this lady. Stunning Defender of the Crown justified the purchase of the Amiga for many owners. Defender of the Crown, I've heard of this. And I need to check it out because the graphics seem amazing. Is this just a 500 game? Yeah, I think so. Wow, the Amiga 1200. This is where my music and creativity began <laughs> with this machine. This beautiful machine, which everyone's dying to get a hand all of right now. Perfect 10 games. Let's have a look what these are. Worms, Fighting Spirit, Alien Breed, T Zero, Simon the Sorcerer, Galax, Gal Galak, Galaga, <laughs> Anescapy, XP8, Star Trek 25th Anniversary, Payback. From all these, which ones have I played? None. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, flash. No, I thought that was flashback for a second. Payback. Amiga CD32. I, I wanted one, but I kind of never had one. And even even now, it'd be kind of cool to have one. However, I've got a 1200 that emulates one. And basically, it's just a 1200 with a CD on the drive. So. <laughs> well, it does have extra chips. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but uh, it does have extra chips. So, these are CD32 titles. It's such a shame. You know, such a beautiful machine, this one. And it's just in the wrong hands. Okay, perfect 10 games. Hold on, was there a perfect 10 games? I've just missed out, haven't I? With a 500. Let's have a look. Perfect 10 games for 500. Worms, Jimmy White's Robo Snooker, Another World, yes. I played that, I love it. Jimmy White's Snooker I used to play too, but not as much as uh, Arcade Pool. Lemmings, yes. Speed will do, yes. Secret of Monkey Islands, mmm. I was never into that. I used to hear everybody talking about it. Alien Breed. Okay, the non AGA. Sensible, no. Theme Park. I did play that. But I, that got all quick for me. Um, but yeah, these are classics. Okay, let's go back. Let's skip back. From my ignorance. Okay, so CD32. 10 best. 10 perfect games. Okay. Diggers, Worms, Flink, Banshee, Guardian, Beneath the Steel Sky, yes, I played the CD32 version. On my Amiga 1200, the tower one. How I miss it. <laughs> Alien Breed, uh, Degeneration, so Zool, yes, I played that. Actually, no, I did not play the CD32 one. It's got extra backgroundy stuff, I think. What's the extra chips in the CD32 do? I'm, I'm not put up on that, to be honest, as much. Lemmings, the ultimate guide. Climber for the blocker. Builder, Vasher, Miner, Digger. 
while I sip my hours on this lemmings conversions. Wow, it gives you the best and worst conversion. Okay, this is an interesting read for later on. Oh, Rainbow Islands. This kind of reminds me of the, the other book we saw last time. The um, visual uh, compendium. <laughs> I'm not good at pronouncing that word. I can never get it right. Oh, this is that demo. Well, that I think it's part of Shadow the Beast. I'm not sure. It must have been a preview or a demo of it or something like this. You did the beasts. Oh, so what's about this? On Zo, my favorite uh, level was always the music level, uh, level two. I love that a lot. I seem to like the music level. Is that John Hare? Yes, it is. The Cannon Porter dude. Flashback. I tried playing this a few times, I just kept getting stuck at one point. I need to play it again. I mean, I was young then, but I need to play it again. Just to kind of like, see if I can. Let's see by how far I can get, what I can do with it. It's been a while since I flick, flicked through a magazine. I used to, I remember I used to do this, just this thing. We, in, back in the Amiga days, I used to buy some of the magazines. Not so many, I wasn't like a huge collector or anything. So I've lost them all since. And, but I used to, you know, just do this exactly the same thing in my bedroom. Chill out for like an hour or something. With some magazines. The Amiga Underground. If you only got your Amiga games from High Street Terror, then you only knew about half what made Commodore's machine so great. <laughs> oh yeah, we know. X copy and all that. <laughs> X uh, Retrograde looks back at the public domain scene and speaks to some of the people that were most invested in it. Good read. Oh, that's that Sabrina. Sabrina? Yeah, Sabrina. Oh, I know this caterpillar thing. My brother showed me this demo. Phenomena. Oh, of course, Tarik. Discovery of the classic C64 game shown on the Omega. Simon the Saucer. I've heard of this game forever. I've heard of it all the time. What is it? Is it an RPG or something? Yes, I think it is. Is it such a big game that, you know, because I've heard it, its name so much. Maybe it's because I can come across it on discs. Worms. Worms, I tried getting into it. My brother kept saying, oh, it's like lemmings, it's so nice, etc. I never actually got into it. I tried it. But it just... It felt too complicated for me for some reason. Maybe I just needed to, you know, persevere, which I just didn't do. But I never just caught on to it for some reason. The Collector's Guide, Amiga 500. Probably Amiga 500 is perfect for collectors and features an array of stunning games across the variety of different genres. It was that it was a stunning machine. It still is. If I had the space, I would love to have one. Seriously, it was the beauty of a machine. I don't care if it's back as slow. Oh my god, I remember this stupid freaking joystick. And this one. This was nasty. My brother had this one. He got this thinking it's cool. 
freaking nasty. It just broke. The zip sticks lasted like, you know, 15 times longer than them. This one I got from the store, but I brought it home and I was just like, what the freak? I, I put it, plugged it in. It was just awkward. How do you hold this stupid thing? Never came across this, never came across this. This does not look comfortable. Actually, it might be. It's the arcade style, isn't it? It reminds me of like, you know, kind of like an Atari thing. This is a freaking ugly thing. <laughs> oh, action replay. Oh my god, I missed the Amiga 500 for this cartridge. Action replay. I used to freeze, I used to rip muds. That's how I ripped all the muds in my collection. With this action replay, I, I, we had an MK2, not an MK3. I don't know what the difference is. But I used to enjoy doing the freeze and the slow, you know, slowing everything down. <laughs> the collector's gone out. And Xenon. God, that's a good game. I used to play that. That's all I remember was this for flashback. Fringe on the Oh, what's this? Big with nuts. Oh, that's freaking. What's that called? Whisked. Weird game. That's such a weird game. New Zealand story. <gasps> Pac Mania, my first ever game that I played. Pimple Dreams. Oh, I like this page. <laughs> that is super SP. Oh my god, Tetris. And do you know something? I always preferred Amiga version Mirrors of Tetris for some reason. I liked the music and the, the mood of it. I preferred it better than the NES, the Nintendo Tetris. Um, I, for some reason I just did. I think maybe it's a nostalgic thing, maybe it's... I don't know what it is, but I preferred this. It's kind of a bit of a trippy version. I watched a documentary about Tetris. Uh, you know, I think it was some sort of. It was on. It's on YouTube, and I watched it. It was very fascinating. The amount of um, <laughs> the amount of trouble this game caused between relations between uh, UK lot and uh, the Russian. <laughs> it's like so uh, thingy communist Russia and all this. But I really like that dude, the, the, the dude who made it, Alexei, what, what's his name, I don't know, but the, the father of Tet Tetris itself, you know, he's such a chill out guy, he was just like, you know, when the words being passed between the UK lot and, um, <laughs> and Russians, he was just like, you know, all this just because of my little game. <laughs> So humble. <laughs> Bless him. Right. This is, you know, I'm gonna be flicking back and forth through this. I did enjoy this, to be honest, and I'm I'm looking forward to actually getting into it and reading the articles rather than just like you know skimming over them. So this is it for now. And thank you so much for chilling out with me. And uh, also, don't forget to check out my other videos. And of course, thanks so much for your likes, your shares. And uh, do subscribe for more. And for now, I will chill out with my Amiga book. And say to you, adios.